Hey everybody, I'm ML7, a support, not healer, and in this video I'll be covering what I call the Kiriko rules. Kiriko is Overwatch 2's first support hero, and I would say the first hybrid support in the game. And her kit has it all, heal, damage, wall climb, teleport, cleanse, invulnerability, speed boost, cooldown reduction, knockback, faster reload time, and more. Her kit is complex, so she might feel overwhelming to play, but to help you get a better grasp of it, I've compiled some rules that you should always keep in mind when playing her. In this video, the rule terminology refers both to rules that you should use while playing her, but also the rules of her kit interacting with other abilities in the game, so that you know what you can do to the enemies and what they can do to you. Grab your snacks and drinks, it's time for the Kiriko rules. First things first, her settings. Three settings need to be changed, listing them in order of importance. Swap your primary fire with your secondary fire. By default, Kiriko's primary fire is set to her heal, healing of Udas, and her secondary fire, Kunai, to her damage. This is cool, but that's about it. Yeah, the primary goal of a support is to heal, so in theory that should be the primary fire, but we have to take into consideration the aiming mechanics of her heal and her damage. The kunai require precise aim, as they are very small projectiles that do 40 damage body shots to non-armor targets, 28 if they have armor, and 120 damage headshot to non-armor targets, 84 if they have armor. The Ofudas have a more forgiving aim mechanic, specifically a lock-on mechanic that works similar to Zen Orb. Once the key input has been given, the Ofudas will usually travel to the target until they reach it. I'll get into details with how this works very soon. This means that once you press the button, you're done. You can do any other action because the Ofudas will listen to your previously given command. To me at least, it felt odd to try to aim precisely with my right click, so I decided to swap the key bindings and it felt way more natural. I strongly recommend giving this a try. Disable Toggle On of Fudas. By default, Toggle Healing of Fuda is set to On. What this does is once you press the button, the Healing of Fudas will stop once all 10 are used. Action, which you can cancel if you press the button again. Now, if you set the setting to off, it will feel a little bit more intuitive because you hold down the button for how much you want to heal. The second you release is the second the healing stops. You don't always have to send all of your Afudas because your allies might not need that much healing. Maybe they just need a little bit of healing so that you can hold the button for let's say 4 Afudas out of 10, then swap to do damage, back to healing and so on. In the end, the setting has the highest personal touch I would say because it depends on how you get used to it, but I recommend setting it off. Swift Step Sensitivity Swift Step Sensitivity means how precise you need to place your cursor on an ally to be able to use this ability. By default, it is set to 50. I suggest turning this up to 100 because you will usually use this ability to escape or to get to an ally to try and save them. Precision is not necessary, but speed is. Even if you don't get to the ally you desire, you should still be able to do what you wanted to do in the first place. Escape or help someone you TP close to. You don't want to be stuck in front of 5 enemies trying desperately to aim precisely at a tracer in the back. Here's the setting set to 10, 50 and 100 so you can better understand why I recommend having this setting set to max. Her healing of Udas work with a lock-on mechanic, similar to Briggs Repair Packs or Xenyara's Harmony Orb. What this means is that if you send your Fudas when your cursor is on your ally, the healing will travel until it reaches the ally or its maximum travel distance. I've tried intercepting them with my Swift Step and it feels like once the Ofudas are distant to somebody, they'll do their best to offer Prime Delivery to them. You have 10 Ofudas and you use 2 of them at a time, so 5 packs in total before they reload. They start reloading automatically once you stop using them or when you use all 10 of them. They will fully reload at the same time, so if you only remain with one pair, all 5 will be reloaded. The reload doesn't interfere with your kunai or any other action. Number wise, each of Uda currently heals for 13, a pair being 26 healing. If all 10 of Udas land on the same target, that totals up to 130 healing. What about the blue and yellow of Udas? Rule. If the Ofudas are yellow, you aimed well. If they're blue, you missed. There were two big mistakes I was doing with her healing. The four arrows that you see show the cast possibility of your swift step and not your healing lock-on. It took me really long to realize that this was the reason I was missing a ton of heals that I thought should have landed. So if the four arrows appear on your screen, it means that you're able to use your teleport and not that the healing Ofudas will connect. 
In this clip, I have both my Hening of Oda sensitivity and Swift Step sensitivity set to 100 and as you can see, they're quite different. The second mistake I was doing was wiggle aiming at my allies and not giving time for the lock on to happen. In this clip, you even see my Ofuras going through the training bot and the healing effect not showing up. So am at an ally, stop for a split second to let it connect and then heal. It's not the same mechanic as with Moira healing. Respect these two rules to get higher healing output. Number 1. Aim closer to the target than your cast ability indicator for your swift step. Number 2. Stop for a split second to allow the heal lock-on to happen before healing. But ML, I saw that the blue of Uras went to the training bot so they should get healed, right? Well, in that clip, the bot was full HP, so I decided to test with someone that took damage before. As you can see in this clip, it is possible to be healed by the blue of Uras, so without locking the heal in, but it is inconsistent, thus not a reliable source of healing. The heal can travel further than the swift step range, but without locking on. It feels like the maximum range for the lock on is the same as the maximum swift step range, which currently is 35 meters. They can follow the target around walls if they travel fast enough, and they disappear after a certain distance. The healing of Uras will follow targets despite them becoming untargetable to the enemies. As you can see in these clips, they can follow a Reaper teleporting, or using Raid Form, a fading Moira, and a recalling tracer. By the way, you cannot heal a Mei in her ice block. The kunai stats have been explained in the settings rules section of the video, but there are still a couple of things that must be known. 1. The knives are projectile, not head scan. 2. They do not have range drop off, so if you aim long distance, they'll arrive at that destination, similar to Anna's unscope shots or Mei's icicles. 3. They do not have damage fall off, they do the same amount of damage no matter the range. The most important goal for your kunai is to aim at head level of where you think the 150 to 250 HP targets are going to be because the pressure you can apply to tanks is quite low. A headshot onto a squishy on the other hand opens up a lot of opportunities. Crosser placement is key with her. Fun facts. The easiest tanks to kill with headshots are Doomfist, Junker Queen and Zarya with 4 headshots each. The hardest tanks to kill with headshots are Diva's Mech, Reinhardt and Hammond with 7 headshots each. If we add the HP that Baby Diva has as well though, then a total of 9 headshots for Diva. The easiest tank to kill with body shots only is Junker Queen with 11 kunai. The hardest tank to kill with body shots only is Diva with 24 kunai, 20 for her mech and 4 for Baby Diva, while the second one is Reinhardt with 19. Now that we've covered the rules of her damage and primary healing abilities, let's dive into methods you can get the highest possible APM with her, or how I like to call it, the Kyrhythm, which I've split into 3 levels. You can use the downtime while the healing of Uras recharge and animation cancels to maximize your damage and healing output. You can do every level while using as much of Uras as you need, but if you use a low amount of them, the damage output will be higher while the healing will be lower. Level 1 of Udaz, one kunai or melee, of Udaz again and repeat. This is the most consistent level to do as you have enough time for heal and enough time to aim to do a little bit of damage until the healing becomes available again. You can do a maximum of 130 healing and 40 damage, 120 if headshot or 30 damage with melee with this level. If your teammates don't need that much healing then you can only use one set of Ofudas for 26 healing and 40 or 30 damage done incredibly fast. Level 2 Ofudas, plus 1 kunai and 1 melee, or 1 melee and 1 kunai, plus Ofudas again, and repeat. As you can see, this combo is deadly, and probably will be the most used one. You can do 130 healing maximum and 40 damage, 120 if headshot from the kunai, plus 30 damage from the melee, so a minimum of 70 damage and a maximum of 150. This will probably be the level I'll be using the most, as in case I miss the knife, I'll always do 30 damage while I'm waiting for my healing to recharge. You can do it two ways, kunai first, melee second, or melee first, kunai second. If you do it the second way, it's worth mentioning that if you hold melee while healing, you will do a melee animation cancel at the end of your ofudas. Level 3, ofudas to kunai, ofudas again, and repeat. 
Hard this one to do because landing two knives accurately fast is not reliable. The only time I would use this is if my allies would be low in front of me and the enemies would also be literally right in front of me so I don't have to adjust my cross like that much. Here's how each level looks like in a practice scenario. Level 1 Level 2 And level 3 The Kiridam Rule after using healing of Udas, while they recharge, throw a minimum of 1 kunai or melee, 1 kunai and melee, or 2 kunai to maximize your healing and damage output. As a side note, a cool trick you can do is to kunai plus press your swift step while not aiming at an ally to reset the knife animation. I think this will be patched. Swift Step is, in my opinion, the strongest part of her kit. This ability allows you to teleport to an ally even if you don't have line of sight of them, so you can teleport through walls. It has a pretty big range, at 35 meters, self cleanses most bad stuff attached to you and makes you invulnerable for a bit while teleporting, allowing you to dodge a ton of things. To explain the goals of her Swift Step, I've divided this part into three sections. Section 1. You cannot use Swift Step if... You are stunned, slept by Anna, shattered or pinned by Reinhardt, hooked by Roadhog, frozen in May Ult, rocked by Sigma, and so on. You are in Sigma's or Zarya's ultimates. You are hacked by Sombra. You are in Junkrat's trap. You are not in range. Or you are dead. Section 2. What can you dodge with Swift Step? If timed right, everything. High Noon, Viva Bomb, May Ultimate Freeze, Earth Shatter, Orisa Ultimate, Sombra ZMP, and the list goes on and on. It's important to mention here that there's a small animation once you cast the ability that made me pat my desk gently with my fist several times. So try to predict when a Roadhog hook is about to come in rather than waiting until the last second. Section 3. What can you cleanse with Swift Step? Now this is where the juice is. We'll split it in two. Here's a non-exhaustive list of what it can cleanse. Junker Queen's Bleed. Junker Queen's Knife. Junker Queen's Ultimate. Maze Freeze. If done right, you will not get frozen in her ultimate. Zenyatta's Discord Orb. Hanzo's Sonic Arrow. Ash's TNT. Widowmaker's Venom Mine. Boops slash knockbacks from Ash's Bob, or his concussive blast, etc. Here's an exhaustive list of what it can't cleanse. Anna's anti nade. I was shocked to see this, especially after I've cleansed Junker Queen's ultimate, which kind of has the same effect. What happens if something attaches to you and you swift step before it explodes? I'm just gonna let the clips roll while I try to explain what's happening. Apparently, the attached items, let's just call them that, travel with you to your destination. They drop off your body when you arrive there. When you reach your destination, you have a couple of invulnerability frames, so if you time it right, you shouldn't get damaged by them. Look at this Cassidy Magnetic Grenade example. But this doesn't mean your allies won't, if they're in range. It is a bit hard to always predict how much damage your teammates will take if you TP with these items stuck to you, because first of all, you don't TP that close to them. Secondly, if they move away from you when you TP, they can possibly create more distance between them and the item that's about to explode, and thirdly, the items attached might have different radiuses. What I suggest to avoid getting flamed is to always use your swift step if these items are attached to you either on your tank that's not low HP or to a 200 or 250 HP target that's full HP and not fighting anyone. I'm sure that with more playtime we'll know for sure when it's safe to TP with the items attached and when it's not. Until then, think twice before TP again with a pulse bomb to your team. One more thing, you can travel further than the maximum range of your swift step if you time it right. Protection Suzu makes you and your allies, if they're in the impact radius, briefly invulnerable, while also giving them a small amount of healing. It also cleanses most negative effects and has a small knockback so you can get creative with it. This ability goes a little bit faster than Anna's nade, so it will take some time to get used to it. This means that if you want to throw it across a long distance, you have to aim a little bit lower than you usually do with your biotic grenade. 
The difference between these two abilities continue. Ana's nade can stay up for a maximum of 6 seconds until it lands, while Kiriko's protection Suzu stays up for 7 seconds. This means that when the Suzu will land, you will have it back up again in 7 seconds as the Suzu cooldown is currently 14 seconds. If your allies are hit by the Suzu, they will not take self damage. This means that your Tracer can't die from her own pulse bomb, but also that your soldier cannot rocket jump. This ability will make the affected ally targets briefly invulnerable. But what does this mean? It lasts for 1 second and it works similarly to Reaper's Raid form, meaning it makes you a visible ghost to the enemies. You take zero damage as the bullets and abilities go straight through you. What this implies is that anything and anyone can go through you if you're benefiting from the protection Suzu effects before the moment of impact. So this is how it would look like if Roadhog hooks, Reinhard pins, Doomfist punches, you get the idea. However, you cannot use this ability to escape Junkrat's trap, Zarya's graviton surge, or Sigma's gravitic flux. To counter gravitic flux, you have to splash the Suzu on an ally or wall right before he slams you so you can survive it. If you use your Suzu before he lifts you up, you will be lifted up but won't take the initial damage. If you use the Suzu to escape Hammond's mines, try to escape fast because you're a ghost so you won't destroy the mines. Now, if you use the protection Suzu after the enemy ability is already set in motion, like here where Reinhardt pins the soldier, the pin will not be cleansed so if you time it wrong, your ally might die. If this is the case, try to time it right so that the ability doesn't do damage. Here's another example with Roadhog. For what the Suzu can cleanse, just eliminate what I said it cannot cleanse, so the Suzu can cleanse Discord Orb, TNT, Ana's Nade, Venom Mine, Sombra Hack, makes you briefly untargetable to Symmetra turrets, etc. Remember that I said that it cannot cleanse Junkrat's trap? Well, don't get your hopes up, it can't. But if you use it before you walk over it, you will not get trapped. Lastly, her ultimate, Kitsune Rush. Kiriko creates a path that lasts 10 seconds, that speed boosts, reduces cooldowns, and doubles attack speed. During her ultimate, Kiriko can do 1300 healing, or throw in enough melees that do more than 500 damage, or throw 25 kunai without animation cancel that if all are headshots, it means she would do 3000 damage. While you're in the ultimate, you can cast her swift step 4 times and her protection suzu 2 times until her ultimate ends. Of course, these are the extremes that will never happen in a real game as a lot of the shots will be missed, but I just wanted to show you how much potential this ultimate has. Oh, one more thing, if you sidestep from a ultimate, you will still benefit from it for a bit. The mechanics of a ult. The fox creates the path so it needs a surface to walk on. Here's the best example I could come up with to showcase this. In this clip, on Rialto, she walks on the boats. But in this clip, her ultimate stops because there's no boat to jump on. The path is blocked by solid objects such as walls or cars. It's worth mentioning here that Maze Wall completely counters Kiriko's ultimate because it creates a solid object. In theory, her ice block can as well, but I don't think it's consistent. So the rule is, if the fox can't run in the space you wanted to place your ultimate in, it will stop. The Kitsune can climb stairs, travel through uneven terrain, drop from high ground, can climb some curved obstacles, be used on both sides of 10 walls, and be dropped from any height. The ultimate cannot climb high ground, gravel where heroes can't walk, which I know is disappointing considering her trailer G baited us. Look at this! It needs only a clear pixel with enough vertical clearance to be able to be casted. However, during pixel ultimate tests, I discovered that the fox adjusts to the terrain, as we can see in these examples. It's super important to know how the fox creates the path, because it allows you to cast your ultimate while being in a safe space where the enemies can't attack you, rather than being in the open. Oh. And you should know, 
the ultimate can help you cross the gap on the Legion Garden map. Rules regarding what abilities can be denied by enemies. This table should come in handy, right? So, Diva's Defense Matrix, Orisa's Javelin Spin, Reinhardt's Shield, Sigma's Shield, Sigma's Kinetic Grasp, Zarya's Bubbles, Genji's Deflect, Mei's Cryo Freeze, Symmetra's Photon Barrier, and Briggs Shield, all of them can deny the Kunai, the Ofuda, and the Suzu. About her Kitsune though, no. But, in theory, Mei's Ice Block should be able to block the ultimate as it's a solid object. Maybe my test wasn't accurate. Now onto the interesting part here. Mei's Wall. Mei's Wall is the only ability that can deny the Kunai, the Ofuda, the Suzu and the Kitsune. So Mei is actually a huge counter to Kiriko. Additional tests. It takes 7 shots to destroy a Torque turret. 1 shot to destroy a Sim turret. 5 shots to destroy Sim TP and your Kunai, Ofudas, Suzu and Kitsune do not travel through friendly Symmetra teleport. Conclusion Kiriko is one of the most complex heroes in the game and I hope that by following the Kiriko rules you will be able to win a lot with her. She's what I consider a new generation of supports in Overwatch that can do a lot of things, promoting a hybrid style of gameplay rather than excelling at one specific thing. I feel that she's the support that Overwatch required at this moment in time because we needed a cleanse on a support character. All the other cool toys in her kit are just extra cherries on the cake. It's gonna be interesting what Kiriko gameplay will look like after we get more experience with her and see if her kit needs to be tuned down or not. Nonetheless, the multitasking she requires is one of the highest in the game and that makes her a super exciting hero to play. Hope you found this video useful. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, it's called support, not healer. ML7 out. Hey, I'm Olaf. If you enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe. Meow.